So if you saw my last two videos, you might be asking yourself, self, does making one of those jack shaft speed reducers for my Mark V, is that going to break anything? Let's take a little walk through the evolution of speed control at ShopSmith and uh, we'll explore that thought. Hey, Scott from MyGrowthRings.com here. Here happens to be in my apartment. And that's because officially today, we have finally, finally moved out of our home. So uh, from, from here on in, we'll be shooting videos in my sister's basement, as you saw last week. And last week, I was showing how to make a very simple speed reducer for powering uh, accessories on your ShopSmith tools, things like the bandsaw, the jigsaw, the scroll saw. And there have been a number of questions about that, in particular asking, can you turn things? You know, can you mount a faceplate on that and, and turn a big bowl? Because that'd be great, because the Mark V at 700 RPM is pretty fast if you're going to turn something very large. And uh, so I thought, let's take a minute to explore sort of the evolution of speed controls at ShopSmith. Um, you know, the, the very earliest of the ShopSmith tools, the 10ER, the one from 1947 that was invented by Hans Goldschmidt, it was powered by belts on step pulleys. And pretty quickly, uh, the company realized that it wasn't entirely convenient, that oftentimes the ideal speed was a speed in between those steps. And so uh, back to the drawing board, they went and they came out with a speed controller. Um, let's pull up a picture. So let's give credit where credit is due. I'm pulling up a few images from the internet and specifically here from Skip Campbell's website, which you can see is K, uh, MKC Tools. Skip has done a bunch of beautiful restorations on old Shopsmith tools and then has gone on to create things such as electronic speed controllers and, and things like that. Anyway, here is a picture of an early Magna speed control. So what's going on here? Um, this thing mounts on the, uh, the, the way tubes of the 10ER. So here you can see where normally there would be just a single belt running from the, the top pulley all the way down to the motor pulley. Instead, you have this mounted between the way tubes and there's a crank on the front. As you turn this crank, it moves this mechanism up and down. So imagine what you have here. You've got two belts that are fixed lengths. And if you were to move a pulley on that, uh, let's say the upper belt, if you were to pull that pulley down, it's going to add tension to the belt. And um, so what will happen is that will push this center section of this variable speed pulley to the side. The belt will then run closer to the arbor, and it'll be as if that belt is running on a small pulley. At the same time, because that mechanism is moving down, um, it is spreading and becoming a larger pulley over on this side. And the bottom belt will then be running on that larger diameter. Now, this isn't the only time that ShopSmith has taken this approach to, uh, to speed control. But again, back in the 1940s, late 40s, early 50s, it made this machine far more versatile to be able to have a, a wide range of variable speed. Just so you know, um, if you're checking Craigslist or you know Facebook Marketplace for 10 ERs, if it has one of these speed controllers, it can double the value of that machine. There are folks that'll pay from 150 on up just for the speed controller because it was an aftermarket part that not everybody purchased. From there, the ShopSmith Mark V was introduced. Let's flip this patent around a little bit. Uh, this was patented, as you can see over here, it says patented 1960, but the application was made in 1955. And if we go ahead a few slides, we can get to the headstock itself. So here inside of this machine, we have two belts. We have what's called a, a Gilmer belt. This is a toothed belt. This was later replaced back in the 1960s by something that is still in use today called the Poly V belt. But over here, we have a V belt running over a pair of variable speed pulleys. So what we have here uh, is basically a pulley that's fixed onto the motor arbor. 
In this case, the, the right-hand side of that pulley is locked in place on the arbor, while the left-hand side is moving left and right and is held under spring tension. So if you were to take a belt and run it into this uh, groove, this V-belt, um, as long as that spring is pushing it in and as long as there's nothing pulling on the belt, it will run on a large diameter as if it's running on a large pulley. Now, if you were to take that same belt and pull it, it would cause that left-hand sheave to open up, okay? So that half of the pulley will open. So what's happening above that? As we turn the crank on the Mark V, we are actually opening and closing this side of this pulley. So this is why when you turn the crank, it, it goes up in speed very easily. There's usually no tension at all because all we're doing is we're grabbing that half of the pulley and pulling it away. That allows the belt to drop down. It's as if it's running on a thinner, a smaller diameter pulley. And the slack is then automatically picked up by the spring that closes the sheave down below and makes it act as a large pulley. Now let's slow the machine down. We start turning the crank and suddenly we're pushing and pinching that belt here at the top. We're causing it to ride up as if it's going from a small pulley to a large pulley because that's exactly what's happening. At the same time, we are forcing this half of the lower pulley to separate. So there's two major forces there working against us as we are lowering the speed. One is we're pushing the upper pulley together, basically pinching that, that, uh, that belt. And at the same time, we're pulling up on the belt and spreading the lower pulley. It's a lot of stuff going on inside of this headstock. Um, so this has worked great for many years, but believe it or not, we're still not done. There's still been some more evolutions in speed control. So that takes us uh, to 1989 when Shopsmith introduced the power station. And let's scroll down a little bit and see what's happening inside of that speed control. We'll rotate this around. So on the front of the power station, also the crafter station, we've got a crank and this crank tightens in place with a, with a, a, a lock handle. And you can see transparently here, there is a pulley and there's a belt running down. And then if we slide over, there's another belt coming down to the motor pulley. And if we rotate that, you can see the top belt coming down, driving a small pulley, and the small pulley on the bottom, driving the large one in the center. Oh, but there's so much more going on here. So here's what's going on. We have a speed controller that's very similar to the speed controller for the 10ER. As you are turning that handle on the front, you are rotating a pinion. The pinion is raising and lowering a rack. That rack has a shaft, and on that shaft, you've got a pair of pulleys, variable speed pulley. So a left hand, a right hand, and a movable member in between. You got a single belt up top that's running over a fixed pulley, and a single pulley on the belt on the bottom running over a small pulley. As you crank that and move that, that pair of pulleys up, one of them becomes small, the other one becomes large, just by virtue of having the belt in between. It's changing speed, the belt is going around a smaller pulley, while at the same time the other belt's adjusting to the larger pulley. It's the exact same speed control that's in, uh, used on the 10ER. Now around this exact same time, Shopsmith was also working on the speed reducer, and that's what we're seeing right here. And really and truly, this is very similar to what I built. So here's what's happening here. We've got a small pulley mounted on the headstock, and that's driving a, a link belt down to a larger pulley. That gives us some speed reduction. On that shaft, on the other end, is a small pulley. That small pulley is the same size as the small pulley that's on the headstock, and that's driving a large pulley, which is the same size as the one over here 
being driven on the first side. Okay, so this steps it down. This is the same speed over here, but this steps it down even slower. The lower pulleys are together on a common shaft and that's supported by a couple ball bearings. Now here's why we can't do turning on this. Um, there is nothing, if this tool weren't here, there's nothing here to drive. We need something here that we can mount the pulley on. This pulley doesn't have its own bearings. Now, if this were made a bit more complex, you could have a shaft here supported by a couple pillow blocks, which in turn could allow you to mount a faceplate or to drive lathe components. So it certainly could be done. So much so, this is exactly what Shopsmith has done with their speed reducer. So what are we seeing here? Well, these are the way tubes down below. Over here on the left is a headstock. You can see here's the spindle where you might normally attach a, a face plate or a, a saw arbor. And then this is driving a shaft that is supported by a ball bearing. So there's a ball bearing here. Uh, we can see this better in a, a different illustration. In fact, let me let me get to that better illustration. Yep, that's it. That's as good as it's going to get right there. Uh, so here we have a pulley right here. This pulley is a small pulley with a poly V belt driving this large pulley. This large pulley is on a shaft and it's the shaft isn't spinning the shaft is fixed on this so this whole pulley is actually a step pulley so there's a small pulley on this end a large pulley on this end there's a poly v belt here and a poly v belt here both of these belts are the same size this pulley is the same size as this pulley and the large pulley is the same size as the large pulley now here's where things get really interesting the spindle here on the Mark V is running at a much higher speed than the output spindle here where we might be doing some turning or drilling. And to, to do that, you have to understand that this spindle here runs independent of this pulley. And you can kind of see what's happening here. We have a, a pair of uh, we have a ball bearing mounted here on the one end. And then inside of this pulley, there's a bearing. So this entire shaft is supported on one end by a pulley, I mean by a bearing. And inside of this pulley is driving on a bearing. Uh, it's, it's a crazy thing, but you've got basically a part sliding over another and spinning the bearings in between them, they were able to make two independent uh, pulleys running essentially together and supporting one another. So the one bearing here supports the left hand side of this pulley, while the right hand side is being supported by this shaft. The shaft is being supported by the bearing here, and it's being supported by the other pulley. It's really a brilliant design. and. Uh, it's, it works quite well. Now down below here, we do have some springs and a couple shafts, and these are designed to keep tension on those two belts. Uh, remember that shaft isn't rotating, the, the shaft is fixed, so it has a couple holes drilled in it where machine screws, cap head machine screws, are inserted, and uh, that spring tension has to be there. If it weren't there, um, you would have a problem with this over time as the belts would stretch or wear, and that's going to happen as well. So the maintenance is necessary in here. There's not a whole lot, but mostly it's uh, keeping little, little bits of, of rubber that come off on that belt and making sure that it hasn't completely bottomed out. If this shaft completely bottoms out, and uh, in which case that could be that your belt would need to be replaced. But quite a brilliant design and uh, here's here's the patent for it so that's what's going on with the shopsmith speed reducer that is why my speed reducer the jack shaft really cannot be used as it is for turning or for drilling that said 
Could you make one that could? Absolutely you could. Shopsmith has done it. So there you have basically a blueprint to do it. Now the, the, the challenge comes in when you talk about putting the weight and the stress that need to, to be supported when you're turning a large bowl or when you're drilling. And so that's a, an engineering feat we'll have to talk about some other time. All right, I look forward to your questions, comments, and cheap shots. See you in the midweek follow-up and make it a great day. And that belt's going to run. I'm talking like a moron over here, Jamie. That's why I have to edit.